welcome back. We are continuing with our discount class examples. Again, a settlement discount, but this time we're going to add a little twist, i.e. we are going to do a change in estimate, i.e. we estimate that on day one, we estimate 60 or 50% of the debtors will qualify for this uh, settlement discount. But then within 30 days or whatever the settlement period is, the figures are different compared to what the original estimate is. What do you do? Well, this example will help with that. So, very similar example to, as compared to the previous one. A limited sales of 100,000 on 31st of December 2014, all of which were on credit once again. On 31st of December 2014, we still expect that 60% of these debtors will settle early, i.e. within 30 days, and qualify for a 10% settlement discount. But then, in the next month, in the new year, in January 2015, only 40% of the debtors actually settle within 30 days. Not the 60% that we expected above, okay, in the previous month. The remaining 60% settle in February 2015. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, please, is a change in estimates. And for that, you need to refer to IAS 8. But the principle here is that changes in estimates are done prospectively, i.e. we do not go back into previous periods and restate. We restate in the current period going forward only. Okay, so once again, you will calculate the revenue and then journalize the complete transaction. Let's do this step by step together. Okay, the amount of revenue to recognize in December 2014 Take a second, do the workings, and tell me, is it A, B, C, or D? Push pause and do the calculation. Great, assuming you've done the calculation now. Ladies and gentlemen, please, I'm asking for revenue in December 2014. Here, we still thought 60% would get the discount. But remember, that is an estimate, right? I've got to think about it like this. I have not got the January figures yet. So how can I use the January figures to estimate revenue in December? I can't. So I'm still going to go 100,000 times 60% times 90% will give me 54,000. And I'll take the 100,000 that I expected at that stage, only 40% would settle late. And therefore not get a discount. So the full 40,000 would go in. I still have 94,000 to recognize in revenue in profit and loss. It stays as B. Okay, don't get confused with the January figures. Those will be dealt with in January. Okay, so the journal now. I want you to take a second. Do the journal for revenue recognition in December 2014. Push pause and go for it. Great, assuming you've done the work, we will go debit receivable. Excuse me if I abbreviate, I'm going to go REC for receivable gross with the 100,000. I'm going to recognize my receivable, my allowance for settlement. Remember this figure is still based on the 60% times 90% of the 100,000. Okay, so this figure still is 6,000. Once again, I remind you that these two are netted off and debtors or receivables are made up of gross less the allowance account. So 100 Minus the 6 gives me 94,000. Okay, so remember on my statement of financial position, these two will be netted off. Okay, the credit here will again go to revenue in profit or loss, and that would be the full 94,000 that we just calculated in the previous slide. Okay, but here's where things are going to get a bit more interesting now. Now we go to January. And in January, guess what? 
we don't receive the 60% we expected, we only receive 40%. Okay, so here I need to do a calculation. I need to take my new estimate, which is based on the 100,000 times 40% times 10%. And here I'm estimating the settlement allowance account, right? And that is going to give me 4,000. The old estimate, well, that was 6,000. What's the difference between the two? Well, I have to reduce it by 2,000, don't I? So if I'm going to reduce this allowance account, well, I previously credited this allowance account. Now I must debit it. So I will go debit receivables, allowance for settlement, with this change in estimate of 2,000. Okay, and the other side, well, I'm going to have to take it to revenue. So revenue was understated in profit and loss. Therefore, I must increase it by 2,000. Please, change in estimates. You must go and work through IAS 8, and you will learn that changes in estimates are never done retrospectively, i.e., I do not go back into previous periods to change estimates, only in the current period going forward. Now I receive the 40%, okay, and I'm going to go debit bank with the 100,000 times 40%, but remember the client will pay 10% less because they got a 10% discount. So I'm going to times that by 90%. And that will give me debit 36,000 Rand, the cash that I receive. I will then also debit my receivables allowance for settlement account. And that will be 4,000, the new estimate. Okay, I had 6,000, I reduced it by 2,000, I'm left with 4,000. Debit the 4,000. And then I will go credit my gross receivable. Remember, both of these are financial position accounts. And that will be 40,000 credit. Okay, now I've reduced the debtor. The last step is in February, I go and receive the final amount. Okay, and in February, I'm going to go debit bank, and that will be the 100,000 times the remaining 60%, 60,000. And I will go credit receivable with the gross receivable, a financial position account of 60,000, and both my gross receivable and my allowance for settlement discounts are both set back to zero. Thank you so much.